Hi and welcome to my YouTube channel. This is Commodore Amiga 500, a revolutionary home computer introduced in 1987 featuring advanced multimedia capabilities and integrated keyboard which sometimes need a repair. In this video I'm going to share my experience how I replaced this old membrane with a whole printed circuit board that I got from PCBWay Shared Projects. This is a keyboard membrane replacement for Commodore Amiga 500. PCBWay is a well-known company for manufacturing high-quality printed circuit boards. They also provide assembly services, CNC, 3D printing and metal sheet fabrication. My favorite part of PCBWay.com website is the shared project directory. There are multiple great projects, many of which are fully open source, that you can order with a single click. This is how I got a keyboard membrane replacement PCB for Commodore Amiga 500. The credit for designing this amazing printed circuit board goes to C64 Istanbul. Huge thanks for designing and sharing this project. This is a suitable replacement for keyboard membrane Mitsumi 56A619A and B. These are membranes with a single connector. Just a few days after placing an order, I received five high-quality printed circuit boards from PCBWay.com delivered to Bulgaria via DHL. As far as I know, the keyboard for Amiga 500 sold in the United States contains 94 keys, including 10 function keys, 4 cursor keys and a number pad. All European versions of the keyboard have an additional 2 keys except for the British variety which still uses 94 keys. Considering all these keys, the dimensions of the printed circuit board are quite impressive. Commodore Amiga is a line of computers uh, that appeared on the market in 1985. They were very capable computers for their time. Commodore Amiga 500 is the most popular computer from this line because it was budget friendly. It appeared uh, on the market in 1987 and it was discontinued in 1992. Recently I acquired three units of Commodore Amiga 500 and I'm trying to repair them. Um, as you can see there is a built-in keyboard, it's a membrane keyboard and 30 years later many of these keyboards require a repair. This is exactly the case with this Commodore Amiga. The keyboard was broken, some of the keys were not working, therefore I had to replace the membrane with a printed circuit board. Let me show you how I did it. Of course, the first step that we have to start with is to disassemble the computer. Using an appropriate screwdriver, remove all screws from the back of the computer. After that, carefully lift and remove the front plastic panel. Of course, your Commodore Amiga 500 must be turned off. Unplug the cables that connect the keyboard to the motherboard of the computer. The keyboard contains several parts. On the back there are multiple screws. Remove all of them with appropriate screwdriver. Get rid of the defective membrane. Place the keyboard connector locking system in an unlocked position. Gently push the printed circuit board into the connector. You may need to shake the PCB a little if it's having trouble getting in. By the way, it is important to say that you can still buy an original fully compatible membrane for Commodore Amiga 500. If you don't like using a printed circuit board like I did, you can still find newly made membranes that are compatible, they're made from better materials compared to the membranes from the 80s, so probably they will last longer. Let's do a quick test of the keyboard even without fully assembling it. I'm going to connect it this way to the computer. Each key on the Commodore Amiga 500 keyboard contains several parts. On top there is a, a keycap, below the keycap there is a spring, below it there is a plastic component with some rubber and a metal plate that makes the contact with the membrane or in my case uh, with the printed circuit board that I'm using as a replacement of the original membrane. Let's give it a test and try out the PCB as a replacement of the membrane keyboard. I'm going to use an original conductive plate from Commodore Amiga keyboard for this test. 
A few seconds ago I said it's a metal plate, but surprise surprise, no it's not metal, it's graphite, which is not metal. But the graphite is a conductor. Graphite has a layered atomic structure in which carbon atoms are arranged in hexagonal lattice. This unique structure allows it to be a good conductor. Here I have to make a very important note that sometimes the membrane is actually not broken, but the conductivity is not that good enough. You may use a 4-bit pencil to increase the conductivity and repair the membrane without replacing it. All initial tests are ok, so I can assemble again the keyboard. The best tool out there for testing an Amiga keyboard is the so-called Amiga Test Kit, which includes a special function for the keyboard. This is an open source firmware developed by Care Fraser, which is available as a disk image that you can load from a USB stick with something like Godek or even better, the open source alternative OpenFlops, which I have installed in my Amiga. And by the way, if you're interested in OpenFlops, you can have a look at my other video, which explains in details how to build one. Step by step, test after a test, let's slowly assemble back the whole Commodore Amiga 500 into its original case. This is the end of the video, so let's wrap it up with some quick conclusions. This is the first time that I'm replacing a membrane with a whole printed circuit board. I have to say that the printed circuit board is slightly higher compared to, to a membrane, therefore the typing experience is slightly different. The benefit of using a printed circuit board is that it is far more durable than the membrane, therefore it will have a significantly longer lifespan. And it's even possible to repair uh, the PCB relatively easier compared to a membrane. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button, subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for new videos.